According to legend, the gods gave life to the Marquesas. This string of islands forms a pearl necklace extending from one end of this Polynesian archipelago to the other. These volcanic formations are situated in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. In the 19th century, French colonists imported livestock onto the island of Oahuca, to the east of the archipelago. Nowadays, over 3,000 horses run wild here. Tekehi is from the village of Vaipe. He owns and oversees the largest herd of wild horses on the island. Although the horses live in perfect freedom, their development must be closely monitored. A filly has just been born and has not yet been branded with Tekehi's special mark. Once located, the horses are herded along the vast plateaus to the coastal cliffs. Trapped between the cowboys and the sea, they are forced to surrender. The lasso is hurled into the air with lightning speed. A majestic stallion is the first to be roped. He puts up a good fight and resists his captor's advances. Despite his mother's protection, the newborn is also captured. A simple nick on the ear and the little one is branded. Tekehi and his men are cowboys in the truest sense of the word. They've adopted the ways of the West and adapted them to the needs of French Polynesia. For the most part, they live for the wild horses. My life is horses. I've been riding since I was five years old. My father put me right on a horse when I was little, and every time I fell off, he made me get right back on again. And I fell a lot. But I won my first race at the age of nine, at the July 14th party. With my sons, it's the same thing. Horses are like brothers to them. They ride, and they're not afraid of anything. I taught my sons how to tame horses just like my father taught me. My horses are powerful. We use them for hunting, for transporting copra. Everyone in the village lives off copra. According to legend, the mother of the stars had an incredible desire to eat copra. After searching high and low to no avail, she finally gave birth to a lovely daughter, all in white, the moon. Copra is the fruit of the coconut. 
It's one of Oahuca's principal resources. Once dried, it can be used to make soup, cosmetics, and coconut oil. Nothing is wasted. The whole of the coconut palm tree is used. The wood, the nuts, even the palm leaves are used to make sacks to transport the copra. A full sack will sell for six to ten dollars, depending on the quality of the drying process. Coconut palm forests are found in the island's higher altitudes, where cars have little or no access. Horses are therefore essential in carrying the fruit of the harvest down to the village. Traditionally, we have two kinds of horses, one for work and the other for races held on feast and celebration days. I'm the only horse breaker in the village. I geld certain horses to make them stronger and more spirited. In some cases, when they are too small, I geld them to conserve the strength and force of their race. I brand the horses with the initials of my French name, Alexis Fournier. However, my son Takai prefers to use the initials of his Polynesian name. Takai is 18 years old. He's an adult and already has several horses of his own. The entire Tekihi family has inherited this passion for horses. In all, they own between 800 and 1,000 animals. Breaking in a horse takes about a week. The animal is slowly introduced to the art of wearing a harness. This is done over a period of two days. Then, little by little, the horse is led around by the yoke. Hane, Tekihi's youngest son, is being taught how to break in his first horse by his brother. It's a big day and Hane has passed the test with skill and courage. He's still young, but his talents are already shining through. Riding horses and being a cowboy is in his blood and will soon be second nature. Planes no longer use the Oahuka airfield. Takai takes advantage of the free landing strip to practice riding and mounting his horses for races and capture. After 15 days of steady work and training, the horses are given back their freedom. Several horses return, more often than not during the dry season, but the custom of letting them run wild is always respected. There are no stables in Oahuka. The horses run free. Ever since I was a child, I've been riding the way my father taught me to, with sculpted wooden saddles. They're the traditional style of saddles in Marquesas. We prefer them to leather ones. 
Hokkatu village has the finest saddle sculptors on the island. Tekehi has to pick up a custom saddle he ordered for the big upcoming roundup. The tools may have changed over the years, but the craftsmanship has remained intact. This sculptor is one of the few who makes rifle holsters. His workshop specialty, however, is tiki. Tikis are Polynesian sculptures of ancestors that have become mythical gods. It takes one week to make a sculpted wooden saddle, and they sell on the market for anywhere from $200 to $400. The majestic mountains surrounding Hokatu village appear to seal it off from intruders, thus creating a peaceful and tranquil atmosphere. The mountains protect the ancient tiki stones from malevolent forces. The gods were once numerous, and each personified a natural phenomenon. The entire village gathered together before them to perform ancient rites of offerings and sacrifices. Tekehi and the other cowboys of the Marquesas still come to these ancient vestiges for sacred protection. A massive Pai Pai lies dormant in the midst of a dense cluster of trees and an ocean of green. Pai Pai are stone platforms that were most likely built up from a nearby riverbed. The sculpted reliefs depict Marquesian legends and heroes. It was 35,000 years ago that the first voyages arrived here from Indonesia. These stone carvings symbolize man's courage faced with the ominous powers of the ocean. The cowboys of Uahuka return every year to these immense plains for the annual roundup. A herd of wild horses has been sighted between Vaipe village and Hane. Some 20 cowboys are present, and they decide how to carry out the roundup so that not a single horse will escape. Islanders attach great importance to ceremonies in which they can show strength in the image of their gods. About 20 horses will be captured. Some will be kept with village families, while the rest will be tanned and sold to buyers throughout the archipelago. Thank <laughs> you. 
The roundup is dangerous, but it doesn't frighten the cowboys. Their courage has been forged through years of experience in the savage beauty of their country. This method of rounding up horses will continue indefinitely, since no modern techniques can compare to the ecstasy of the gallop. Old Moy is 70 years old. His years of experience have earned him the nickname of John Wayne. The old cowboy no longer sleeps under the stars as he did in the past. Big roundups always finish up on the beach around a campfire and a fish barbecue. I'm known throughout the archipelago as a horsebreaker. In fact, I just got a phone call from Waupu. Someone asked me for a horse. Well, I should get about $1,000 for it. The horses are transported to the other islands on one of two schooners that come from Oahuca once a month. The Aranui schooner arrives from the Tuamotu Islands. Coming into the bay of Oahuca is no easy task because of all the rocks along the shore. Anchoring the boat is always a great event for island inhabitants. It takes 15 days to cross the Marquesas. Aranui carries passengers and freight. Its principal activity is to carry harvested copra from all of Polynesia to Tahiti. Usually, horses are loaded onto the schooner with a crane, just like other heavy merchandise. Today, Tekehi's horse is being sent to Uapu on a barge called Mario.
Bridge. When Tekihi isn't taming horses, he takes his son Emeni to the Island of the Birds. It's a veritable kingdom where Kavekas, or black-headed birds, lay thousands of eggs per day. The natives love the taste of the pink kaveka eggs and gather them regularly. Ocean swallows also lay eggs on neighboring islands. Access to them is forbidden in order to protect the race and the inhabitants respect this precautionary measure. Tekehi, his sons, and all the cowboys of Uahuka accord great importance to preserving their past for future generations. They have true respect and appreciation for their environment and the creatures that live within it. <laughs> 